Good morning. Good morning, and uh, on behalf of IIT Delhi, I Bharat Garg welcome you all to our exclusive one-hour webinar for internal audit professionals on today's exciting topic of Chat GPT for auditing. You know, as technology continues to revolutionize the auditing landscape, it's very important for all internal audit professionals to stay ahead of the curve. And in today's session, we have Yukti Aroda and Sambhav Gaur, and together we will explore the immense potential of Chat GPT, which is a cutting edge language model in the realm of auditing. It will help us gain valuable insights into how Chat GPT can streamline our audit processes. It can enhance risk identification and improve overall compliance monitoring and framework. With expert speakers and real world case studies, this webinar promises to equip you with practical knowledge and strategies to leverage this powerful tool effectively. So let's get ready to embrace the future of auditing with chat GPT. Now, you know, so far you could have made out that I was actually reading my notes. And uh, since this is a session for chat GPT, so I thought, let me leverage chat GPT for writing this welcome note as well. So I simply asked chat GPT to write me a hundred word welcome note for one hour webinar for IA professionals on the topic of chat GPT for auditing. And here it is what it produced. So, and as you are aware that I Delhi branch, it launched a series of six trainings last year. All the topics were very contemporary. The training content was curated very, very carefully. We chose the best of the best speakers and we got amazing response for each and every training program. However, this particular, the last in the series, it has surpassed all our expectations. We have got a record 383 registrations for this webinar. And I think this itself states why people are so excited about it. There is a lot of euphoria about around everyone as there is a lot of buzz around chat GPT and various other AI models which have been appearing, but still it's a new concept. People are looking for use cases. One very classic use case, you know, which I just showcased. So I requested chat GPT and it came up with a welcome note. Last week, uh, I also used uh, chat GPT for generating a PPT for my eighth class daughter. So there was some specific topic to write about a personality. Requested chat GPT to write me a VBA code, ran it in uh, PPT, it threw error, lots of errors. It was a reiterative process, took me around 15, 20 minutes. The PPT was not great, but uh, still, you know, it was a very good starting point. So the, the potential of chat GPT is immense. We are looking, you know, how it can help us in our own respective areas. And that's where this session comes in. So let the learning begin. And uh, with this, I hand over to our vice president, Ms. Sana Bakai, for introducing our expert speakers. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Bharat, for showcasing the chat GPT strength with, this, with the beginning of this session. No doubt it has a lot of potential. The only thing is we should know how to use it. Uh, different prompts I could see on uh, various platforms where people are getting trained on what to ask, how to ask to get the desired results. So I welcome you all for today's highly anticipated webinar organized by IAA Delhi Branch Women's Forum. Of course, this is last in the series of the Super Sixer, which we started last month. And uh, hopefully this is uh, the one which you are interested to join in, which is future for auditing as well. In today's rapidly evolving technology landscape, it is crucial for auditors to adapt and embrace innovative tools and techniques to enhance their auditing practices. With the advent of artificial intelligence and the natural language processing, which in short, we call it NLP, the way auditors conduct their work has undergone a transformation. 
Today, our speakers, Yukti and Sambhav, they are expert in the field of auditing and having an extensive experience in leveraging the power of chat GPT in their professional uh, endeavors as well. So they will be shedding light on how chat GPT can be effectively utilized to streamline auditing processes, augment decision-making, and ultimately improve the overall effectiveness and efficiency of audits. All of you understand that, uh, of course, chat GPT was the one uh, in the row. And after that, lot many AI tools has been introduced, including the one which is introduced by Google, Google Bard. Uh, of course, the results of the chat GPT, et cetera, will be very different from the other tool. There are a lot of paid tools available for generating content, for making photos, for different, different uh, work. They can, they can give you a code and anybody from any field can use that. So while others are using, it is important for the auditors to use this technology to actually uh, reduce their load of work and come up with something different what is happening. So chat GPT is a large language model that has been trained, uh, trained on a massive data set of text and code. This allows chat GPT to understand and generate human-like text, which makes it well-suited for different tasks, including auditing as well. So, for example, chat GPT can be used to review financial statement for inconsistencies or error, generate auditing checklist, conduct analytical reviews, communicating with clients and uh, stakeholders. It no doubt offers numerous benefits, which include increased efficiency, improved accuracy. Of course, the accuracy always depends on how you are asking it to do. And of course, a little bit reduction in the risk uh, it can help to mitigate the risk of error and omission in the audit process. However, there are certain risks which is associated with the using of this chat GPT. It is, again, the reliability is still an issue, as Bharat also mentioned that while using it, it come up with a lot of errors, no doubt. Biasness, of course, the way chat GPT is trained, the way the content which it already has, it can only give what knowledge set it has or maybe learning over a period of time, the way you are uh, putting in information, getting it trained. Or, and of course, one of the major concern about it, the security. Since it's a cloud base, it, there could be a risk of data breaches as well. So uh, with, with this uh, thoughts, let me hand over to chat gpt to introduce today's speakers let me just quickly sambhav guer is a technology leader who is currently leading the engineering and technology department within the global innovation team at fidelity international he is responsible for identifying solutions to business challenges by evaluating emerging technologies and leveraging them to improve existing processes. Sumbhav has a bachelor's degree in computer science and an advanced program in strategic management from the Indian Institute of Management Calcutta. Prior to his current role, he has worked with companies such as Bank of America, Sapient Technology, Sony Electronics, and Experian. Yukti Arora is a partner at Omnia Consulting Services, a women collaborative consulting firm. She is a chartered accountant, LLB, and certified information systems auditor, CISA, with over 23 years of experience in the field of technology and business risk consulting. Yukti has worked on both sides of the table, having worked in industry in large listed companies as well as in big for consulting firms. She specializes in emerging technology audit and advisory and is currently focused on developing her firm, which aims to empower women to become leaders in their professional domains of internal audit. Thank you, Sana. Thank you, Bharat. Uh, 
for introducing the subject. We continued uh, the innovative way how Bharat introduced, right? Uh, have the script ready with the with the chat GPT. So this is our introduction from the chat GPT. Yeah. So we allowed chat GPT to learn about us through our LinkedIn profile. So whole responsibility of our introduction is, is to the chat GPT and the information which is there in the LinkedIn profile. Yeah. So this is a short intro of the power of these new technologies possess. Though commonly we call it as chat GPT, but as a topic, it's more of a generative AI. I think like uh, Sana mentioned, there are other tools which are evolving, uh, right? Uh, we can argument about the accuracy and the efficiency of these, uh, but we'll, we'll cover and focus onto, onto the topic of generative AI. Uh, chat GPT is one example, which is coming from uh, more of a open AI uh, tool. Just let me quickly go on to write, what is chat GPT and why should you care? So chat GPT is, is more of a web-based AI power, uh, powered chatbot, uh, which is available uh, on the mobile app as well, developed by OpenAI. Uh, with the name, right, uh, it is not so open. Uh, though it started as more of a community-driven initiative, uh, which is very non-profit uh, to begin with. However, with the po popularity, right, and the accuracy, efficiency it's able to achieve, now this company is how I see it is more of a, only for a more of a profit, right, company, which is a game changer somewhere in, in a lot of uh, uh, businesses, right, for uh, as of now. So you can check about anything uh, on chat GPT, like Sana mentioned, right, you can draft email uh, for your client, for yourself, you can summarize articles, you can translate uh, text you can uh, write code and also explainability of the code, right? How to, well, uh, what is the reasoning, right? Of writing onto the flow of the code, how to run the code, so on and so forth. Yeah. So maybe- so uh, some of, uh, How can I use it as an internal auditor? Sure. Sure. Be. So, so if you are an auditor, right, chat GPT can quickly analyze large volume of text, uh, generate summaries, answer questions, and even assist in risk assessment and, and fraud detection. Uh, this powerful tool can become an indispensable asset to auditors, uh, streamlining their workflow, improving their overall efficiency and effectiveness to their work. So I think there are a few, of course, it is an early stage right now, but they are leveraging uh, more of can, uh, can enhance their research capabilities by quickly accessing and analyzing vast amount of information from various sources. The model, right, which is working behind the uh, these generative AI models, right, has a uh, ability to generate the summaries, right, which can help auditors to extract key insights. In fact, we are uh, doing multiple experiments where we can uh, trying right how to how to extract insights, contextual insights out of large reports. Uh, some of the uh, vendor notifications and emails, right? How we can do it more uh, in a more of a relevance for the information and the businesses. Yeah, chat GPT can act as a virtual assistant, like more of a traditional chatbot, of course, more contextual, more accurate, uh, uh, providing prompt and accurate responses to the queries related to audit procedures, regulations, and best practices. One thing, uh, when we are talking about regulation and best practices, uh, we should all, uh, uh, understand that right? chat GPT uh, is being trained onto billions of attributes and records, which is still September 2021. So in our head, right, we should be uh, aware and sensitive that it doesn't know anything beyond 2021. However, there are certain workarounds to do that, which I'll talk a little bit later. But um, you can actually, uh, uh, as an auditor, rely on chat GPT, right, to assist with documentation, helping to write concise and comprehensive reports. Yeah. So uh, more of a, I think one more uh, area, right? I think Sana touched upon it. It's more about uh, to identify potential anomalies, unusual transactions or compliance issues into, into vast data sets. This can help uh, auditors proactively identify risk, mitigate potential threats and protect their organizations. The security part is, uh, is, is very much right is the besides compliance, ethical and the security. This is the subjects which are, uh, under uh, more of a scrutiny with multiple organizations. Some of the organizations have uh, restricted, right, uh, to use chat GPT as of now, or, or in that case, any of the any of the uh, tool, right, from the generative AI, because they are in experimenting, including us, that how we can actually put up right controls, compliance, uh, before we adopt it onto the business use cases. Yeah, so if I'll, I'll give you a one example here, right, onto writing an email, 
uh, by chat GPT. Let me just quickly go on to, uh, just give me a second, if I can. Yeah, so this is the chat GPT interface. Yeah, let me just quickly go here. So here I have written a prompt, right? Write an email summary to client, right? There are three issues which I have highlighted, lack of documents, segregation of duties, and IT security controls are weak. There is an action item which I have mentioned that we will share the detailed report and hold a follow-up meeting, right? So this is, this is uh, more of a interacting, right? This is called a prompt to the chart GPT, which is one of the input to the chart GPT. So let's see, right, uh, how chart GPT is uh, responding to this. So if you'll see, right, it has actually put up a narrative onto an email. It has detailed out these three issues, which I have mentioned, lack of documents, segregation of duties, weak IT security controls, and it also put up an action item here. Now, I think the second interesting thing is, is more about holding the context, right? Which is which was usually not happening into the chatbots. So if I'll say, right, the client name is Joseph, right? I'm telling the chat GPT and my name is Sambhav and designation and the company. And now I'm telling uh, chat GPT, right, to hold the context and then write. So if we'll see uh, how chat GPT uh, again responding, right? So it has mentioned that, Right now, right, it has not put up the placeholder because now it knows that right, what is the name of the uh, of the client, yeah, and then it is again putting up the narrative together uh, for us. So this is how we can hold the context, right, and improvise onto onto uh, more of outcomes of the chat GPT through right prompts. We'll see more example as we progress further in the session. Yeah, so I think here. It so has some of this is quite interesting. And let me also try some part of it from an internal audit perspective. Sure, sure. Ruti. I think that makes sense. So yeah. I think the last part here, right, it has actually put up the signature together because now it knows about, right, who, who, who I am because I'm telling it. So sure, let me just quickly sh uh, stop sharing my screen. Yukti, if you want to share your screen and maybe build on to under the example. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So is my screen visible? Yeah. Yeah, so I think this is the first page. And as an auditor, first and the foremost thing for us is also to look at the limitation. So we have to be very much aware of their certain limitations because it is, and they are clearly spelled out like it may occasionally generate incorrect information. So we have to be very cautious about it, aware that there could be certain things and do not just use it as it is and apply our human judgment. And as Samba and Sana and has also spoken about biases and various types of like um, uh, data security related issues. So we have to be aware of about it. Secondly, we have to be uh, also aware that it can cause certain very, very harmful instructions, which may not be useful for the organization. So we have to be doing proper risk and due diligence before embarking on this journey of chat uh, GPT and also using it in our uh, business context and for our clients as well as within our own organization. Uh, this is a free version which we are using and therefore it has a limited knowledge and the events after 2021 are not incorporated. So they, but, and so you know, we are in a rapidly changing field. So every day there are so many changes happening. So obviously the results are not something which are uh, as current as today. So therefore we have to be aware of these types of things. There are various examples which are written over here and the capability which uh, Sambhav has already spoken about. Now let me try this chat GPT right from the point when we are setting the organization of uh, internal audit. And let's see how we can actually set up this entire like uh, thing. And uh, for example, if we want to have some IT audit heads 
for uh, technology company who is responsible for the entire IT internal audit program. So I'll just give this prompt, like prepare job description of IT audit head for technology company. Uh, look at it, I've given a very specific content. Uh, the prompt has been given so as to make it a little specific and avoid this uh, general generic thing. And he will be responsible for managing overall IT audit function. And as I give this to this, uh, the entire job description comes. So obviously we'll have to make changes to it. We'll have to customize it as per our own environment, but definitely some basic work is already done and look at it. It's also giving some qualifications and the type of knowledge and experience the person is required to have to perform this role. So this is like um, a very, very basic like uh, use case. So it helps us in putting that uh, perspective of having right from the hiring perspective of internal audit. Now, internal audit department captures lot and lot of confidential data. And we have this information which is coming from various sources. And data security is one of the prime area which internal auditors have to be cautious about. So we have to also take care and ensure that we have those like things. So I have written a second question. What measures internal audit function should take to ensure data security of data they gather while auditing process? And look at it, what it gives a response of all the checks and balances which we as an internal audit function need to take care of while we are having this. And if you look at the responses or the type of like uh, information and the data classification, access control, encryptions, how we store the data, masking of data, normalization, audit trail and logging, data retention, disposals, given us recommendation for every expect, including network and the awareness and training and regular assessment in, for the internal audit function as well. So this is the a good like starting point to bring security also within the internal audit function. Now let me like ask a third question because see to bring that security we need to have uh, be aware what all data we are having. So if we ask this same question to the chat GPT, it can list down what all assets which an internal auditor typically has. So we will be having some uh, physical assets, right? Some information and data assets. It classifies it and gives it in a correct perspective. Okay. So, so, so see, like it's it's a good buddy. It's a good intern uh, for us who can do some basic research, provide us some basic information, and give us some uh, data and high level starting point so that we can work further on it. There are limitations. I was like told by some verb, there are 11,000 uh, words which can maximum come on this like prompt. So uh, there are certain limitations, but in the paid version, I don't think so there, these limitations are there. But before we go to the paid version, let us like try to utilize this for this um, purpose fully. Then now let me check another question. Since internal auditor has a responsibility to be learning on daily basis, and there are a lot of emerging audit areas which are coming. And let me ask Chad GPT, what are like how we can address this problem of continuous learning? And what are some important e-learning sites where we can go and learn this like topics around ESG, cloud security, auditing stand technologies, etc. And we will be surprised to uh, see that it gives the entire like sources of all these things, including uh, various things. And the good part is at the top of it, it has put Institute of Internal Auditor Learning. So that is that clearly shows that how um, vast the internal auditor uh, contribution has been. Institute of Internal Auditor contribution has been in this. Uh, field and and there are various other sources from which we can learn. Now, uh, since it has not given me the websites where I can do the learning, let me put another question and uh, how I like the to get the links of those e-learnings from where I can go and learn. So I'm just putting that question and it's a prompt which has given and it gives me the links to the websites from where I can learn. So um, 
So it all depends on the prompt we give, how intelligent our prompts are. And it is a contextual learning. So it, from the previous question, it is taking. And then based on that, it is improving and giving us the response. Over here, like I just gave the questions, please provide me the share the links of e-learning. I didn't care for what e-learning for what, but it learned from the, my previous question. And based on that, it has given me the responses. So this is another interesting expect which we all should be aware of. Now, since I have done this and uh, we have as an internal auditor face lot of issues like we don't get response from the auditee. There is lack of time which we get from auditee. Auditees are not sharing information and data. They are not agreeing to what we have uh, identified as an audit observation. So even I can use this as a buddy or as a guide to get um, some soft skill training of how to deal with these types of situations. So I posted this question. So how I can resolve this issue? And uh, it has given me a clear way of dealing with it. Obviously, this is a generic response, but it can give me a cue of how to deal with it. It has clearly told that we need to have a very good communication line, proper planning process, having a good engagement with the management, setting the expectation right, having more uh, approach of collaboration and being a little more flexible, giving the value right at the start of the engagement, building relationship throughout the process through a positive feedback, escalation with and management support wherever it is required, and then having a clear document evidence required list and objective and professional approach while dealing with it. So this is an extremely good starting point, specifically when we have large number of team members who are new to this internal audit profession, joining our teams and uh, also like every internal auditor is uh, having limited bandwidth and they have to cover the huge audit plans. So these like tools can be used to provide them not only the learnings which are only on the subject, but also on the soft skills of how to deal with a particular situation and address those issues which they may be facing in daily basis. But they have to be extremely careful of taking care of the privacy, confidentiality, and the risk of sharing data on open AI, which is like generally shared and which is used for learning purposes. Uh, let me also put another question uh, by like once we have set up this department and we have to start an audit process. If uh, we have to draft a mail for kickoff of, uh, let us take an example of HR audit, which is covering hire to retire process. So if I give that prompt, so it will give me a like Sambhav has also shown how the mails was drafted. So it gives me a clearly a way of how. Uh, this is uh, getting prepared. It clearly lays lay down the areas and scope, the process which we will follow, and the roles and responsibilities of our team members, and the document and evidence requirement which we will be uh, requiring for the audit process, and the key concerns and the focus area. So this is a very, very good starting point to draft our mail, to send it in a more professional uh, manner and ensure every aspect of it is covered as a part of audit process. Now, since if you can see in the previous thing, the entire scope was not clearly laid down. So therefore I have changed my prompt and I'm just putting a different ways of putting wherein I'm giving the complete description of what all I need to cover as a part of process and uh, of an audit of this HR uh, thing. So I've written hiring, onboarding, ghost employee, leave, attendance, payroll, special incentives, perform all these areas which are typically covered in HR audit, I've given that. So when I give this type of um, request, so it, it customizes it as per the areas in scope, and it also gives a brief description of what all is going to be covered as a part of this audit process. So we can see that it, it has um, a very, very well-defined thing, including laying down the agenda. Okay, now let me take you another, like, uh, let's go further. Uh, so once we have given this mail, the next step for us is also to work 
do some risk assessment and prepare the based on the understanding the risk control matrix which we want to test okay so i can ask i can leverage this chat gpt to prepare the risk control matrix covering this thing over here i've given it in a tabular format because generally we prepare that in a tabular format so i've given that uh, instruction to prepare it in the tabular format and let's see how the output comes so it's clearly uh, giving down all those expects since there's a limitation on the um, count of the data points it requires as well press continue generating so that's how like we can see it has covered entire like process of the scope area obviously it's not exhaustive but there yeah, definitely some of those uh, areas which are critical they have it has covered it has given the control objective the risk the activity and the test procedure as well and we can make it more specific by writing a particular areas and asking in specific risk and control for that particular area as well let us take another like let's move forward once we have done this the next step for us is to do and share the document requirement list okay so that we can get the information from the audity so i've asked them to share the document request list in a tabular format and see it is like giving a output wherein the requirements are also mapped the document requirements are also mapped to it i'll continue generating so for each of the areas i can get a document requirement list as well to be covered all right. all right so now after we have done this then we may uh, uh, we are required to test and document our design implementation and operating effectiveness so i'll just give a generic like statement that can you write this in design implementation and operating effectiveness testing covering this and let's see what results we get so it is giving in tabular format see the content of it is there but see the way it has is documenting is not perfect it is writing one below the other other but we can improve this by using prompt engineering so it is giving those types of response how we are testing and including what steps we to do to uh, test the implementation as well as operating effectiveness and it is um, also clearly giving the mechanisms or the ways of sampling it's it see here it's very clearly saying that review a sample of separation settlement and verify the accuracy and the timeliness so this is a very very important and effective way of starting specifically for the newcomers now for instance we have a huge data set and we want to analyze it and obviously using python codes etc are the best and the most fastest way to do it but we as an internal auditor do not have that skill to write those codes so we can uh, use leverage chat gpt to write this uh, code for us so we we can put the command like write python script to analyze full salary paid to employee whose leaves have elapsed and whose attendance was less than 15 days during the month so it can generate that script which we can use and it is also showing from where we data source which we can generate and use now if after doing the review the next step for us is to prepare the report and let us assume we have some observations which we have identified so i'll give the specific observation which are there and i let me ask chat gpt to prepare a report in tabular format with observation root cause risk and recommendation so it is giving the observation the risk the root cause and the recommendation obviously we can customize 
So this is like a, a very, very effective tool to even train our uh, employees to give, give them some quick trainings with and demos and help them in learning the internal audit process, the way of writing, and including improving on their skills of internal audit. And um, I think uh, as a chat GPT uh, user, myself for last four months, five months, I have seen uh, it only improves when we use it extensively and improve on the prompts which we are uh, giving to this uh, entire thing. And there are many more tools which are available besides this chat GPT. Uh, some of them are chatbots also, which get generated. And I am sure like Sambhav is going to cover them in the subsequent uh, slide. So I'll stop sharing over to you, Sambhav. So Sambhav, you are on mute. Thank you. Let Thank me you. quickly share my screen. So uh, I think, uh, thank you for right, uh, showing us some of the use cases and some of the good elaborated prompts, right, which are actually uh, very, very essential uh, to get generate right outcomes. Um, the next topic is, is around, right, I think, uh, like you said, we are using the free version of chat GPT during this session. Uh, and there is, uh, there's on the left side, right, there's an upgrade to plus. Uh, which is chat GPT plus price and feature. I'll, I'll just quickly cover it. I'm seeing a couple of questions in the Q&A, but I'll take first one, uh, one of it right before I'll cover onto the price and feature is more around the data security, right? Data is private to the client. Uh, so far, how, how we have seen is that there are two, three ways, right? How you can uh, leverage the generative AI bots, including chat GPT. One is that you can have the subscription of it. There are uh, uh, companies like Microsoft Azure, which does more of a middle wearing compliance and data controls. When we are sending the request to the open AI or chat GPT and getting back the, the response from it, you can actually control a uh, lot of, lot of uh, uh, more of a, uh, from the data security perspective, compliance perspective, you can put up certain enterprise controls in that middle layer, right? If you'll get a more of encryptions or, or subscriptions through, uh, uh, Microsoft Azure, yeah. Uh, there are companies who are actually uh, uh, fine tuning their uh, models themselves using some of the reference from the open source. If I, if you can see my screen right, this is one of the website where you can see a lot of models. So a few of the companies are actually taking the base model from the open source, right? And you can see the communities which are active onto these models, and then fine tuning their data, uh, uh, their models onto their data and hosting it within their firewalls, right? So this is the second way how you can actually put up some controls uh, onto, right? While you're dealing with the sensitive and uh, confidential data, yeah. And third one is, is more around that, like likes of Bloomberg, right? What they are doing, they are actually building their models from the scratch, right? Which is of course a, a costly affair, but that is also a way, right? How you can actually uh, put up right uh, controls, uh, compliance onto the, on the security data security part of it. Yeah, so there are two, three ways how you can manage uh, the security of the data. Uh, there are question onto the, onto the prompts like from uh, the HR audit, I'll cover into the next section. But before that, uh, let's quickly cover the chat GPT plus some of the features there, right? So as of now it is $1.20 uh, per month, US dollars 20 per month chat GPT plus offers. And some of the benefits you'll get is that you can actually have the 100% availability of the chat GPT even in the peak times. Uh, if you're using free version, uh, because of course there's a lot of, lot of uh, load onto, onto the software, right? I think after Instagram, this is, this is the most viral tool. Um, I, I think uh, even, uh, so sometimes you get more of an internal server error. Sometimes it is not um, accessible, all right? Good for us that during the session, it is, it is all working fine. But if you have the, the paid version, you'll have the assurance of 100% availability uh, of it. We have observed, because we are also using the paid version in some of the experiments, that the response time of the model, right, uh, and even and when you're using for the longer duration, right, two or three hours, you, you feel it, right, that the response time is, is faster in the paid version compared to, to the free version of it. The third example, which I'd like to highlight is, is that you can select certain models based on the business use cases or, or your use case onto the paid version. It offers you that ability. In the free version, it is there is a default model 
uh, right, which is 3.5, uh, which is of course being uh, offered to you. So that keeps default. But in paid version, you can select uh, from the list of different models what you want to use, what suits you, and brings more efficiency in in your work. Yeah. And the fourth one, which is which I feel is is more important, that certain uh, marketplace is evolving right along uh, on these uh, generative AI bots uh, that some of the organizations are offering some of the plugins. Um, I think one of the limitation I, I uh, referred into in the initial uh, part of the session is that this is being framed uh, till September 2021. So uh, ChatGPT doesn't know anything beyond that, right? So, so I think the alternative to it is that we can, if we are under the paid version, you can actually connect to a plugin, and that plugin can connect the ChatGPT onto the internet. So if you're asking the regulation, right, or some of the latest policies, you can actually access that uh, through this, right, a paid version where you can connect to the pl uh, plugin and you can actually have uh, more of a conversation and chat GPT will be knowing about the latest policy changes, regulations, et cetera, and can actually feed it into, into the outputs. Yeah, there are certain plugins around uh, the flight information, around uh, food bookings, right? And the various industries are coming up uh, in terms of integrating their uh, businesses or information, market information into the chat GPT responses. So all that uh, sort of uh, early access you'll get in the chat GPT plus. So these are the four areas, right? Which are essentially, and of course there could be more, but these are the four which are, which are primary, uh, right? More of a, uh, how you see, right, as a decision to opt for uh, chat GPT plus or uh, being under the free version as only, yeah. I think the next question is around uh, share the prompts list use in HR. So I think prompt engineering, uh, I'll focus. Um, so it is important, right? Uh, but why exactly should you care? Uh, you should care about it. So I think the, the models, right, uh, of course, more of a black box for most of us, but most of the business people, right, who are coming up with a lot of experience are focusing now onto the prompt engineering layer. Yeah, even the organizations are uh, building, right, their skill set onto having the right prompts. So prompt uh, is more of a, uh, if I take example, right, write me a blog post about hiking. Now, right? if I do it, it's a more of a generic blog post, uh, but, uh, and they'll not be interested, right, for the for the audiences. But if I'll just tweak it, and I think Yukti uh, uh, referred into and showed you into some of the prompts. Uh, let me just quickly show you, right. So if I'm saying that write a blog post about hiking in Himalayas, right, I'm actually referring a place, a lovely summer day, describe the feeling of starting early in the morning, having lunch on the mountain top, and coming home uh, exhausted but happy. So now I think we are adding more of a uh, more of a specific experience, right, and emotion into it. So there is a goal, which is writing a, a blog post. There are certain information which I have given, right, which is more personalized to me, which is uh, which is there. So this post, uh, compared to write a more of a generic blog post, will be uh, right more appealing uh, to the to the audiences, right? So the art of writing, right? The question to these generative AI bots, right? Essentially is, is uh, more of a prompt engineering, right? I'll come back here, right? So, so I think good prompts, of course, uh, lead to uh, more of a good outcomes, but some of the core elements of prompt engineering here is, right? So, so I think the, the context part, right? So one is goal and the other one is the context part. These are the two uh, areas, right? Where we should focus. Um, so, so and, and because it is quite common that for many uh, prompts, you add a role to the prompt. So where you assign a role to chat GPT so that it's not just a default AI assistant, it actually have a persona. And according to persona, uh, it can actually respond to you, right? So if we want chat GPT to create a highly engaging tweet, uh, which we can post on Twitter. We could specify a goal that could be um, uh, write or, or or tweet about hiking, but we could also specify an extra role uh, typically before specifying the goal. And in that extra role, you can tell chat GPT that how it should be uh, behave, right? So let me uh, give you a quick example uh, of this, right? Uh, 
here if I'm going on to the here. Right, so if you'll see here, right, you are experienced Twitter user. I'm defining a role here uh, in my prompt, right, which is usually very important before you come onto the goal. The goal is writing a tweet about hiking. And then I think I can put up some extra information or constraint about the prompt, right? So tweet should use no more 10 emojis, right? I'm just putting up and target nature enthusiast. So I'm also talking about who it should target and highlight some of the advantages there, right? So I think this is uh, some of the basic building elements of the prompts. So what I get uh, right from the chat GPT, right, is unleash the adventure within uh, regular hikes of our double close. So it has put up some of the emojis there, right? It has actually targeting some of the uh, more of uh, uh, nature lovers, right, uh, there. And it has put up the hashtags as well. So you can gen regenerate and you can work on to these prompts, calling all nature enthusiasts. So it is very specific on to, all right, what is my specific target audience here and how I should uh, focus onto that, right? So these are the three, four elements onto the prompt engineering. I'll quickly go on to, right, example, these are some of the resources, right, which you can refer to, I think, going on to the question of the HR audit that you can defini def define a HR maybe, uh, auditor role here, right, submit, and then you can actually generate some of the prompts here. So Hugging Face is one of the, I think in our experience, of course it is, there are multiple online resources there, but I'm just uh, referring to few, which you can uh, read, and then you can uh, actually create your own prompts here. Uh, Learnprompt.org is, is also one where you can have more of a beginner, intermediate, advanced, and, and more of an application-based kind of prompts. These are the communities where a uh, lot of uh, people, right, have submitted their prompts on a specific business use cases or, or areas. Learnprompting.org, uh, I, I think we can share it after the session, but these are some of the resources, right, which we usually refer to. Uh, this is one of the resource, which is actually, uh, so all the startups, right, they're evolving space or a lot of companies which are working on specific use cases, you can check right what is of your interest you have the filters here so these are some of the resources i wanted to uh, uh, actually bring uh, into the session but we can talk more on to it so so this is uh, more around the chat uh, gpt more of a prompt engineering there are certain application layers as well which is happening right or people or, or organizations are developing that if a team, right, uh, maybe a, a certain a domain team in your organization is asking uh, the chat GPT or this generative AI bot, it should have this tone, this uh, more of a, a, a style of outcomes. So you can actually have the complete layer configured uh, for your uh, business use cases there. Uh, Anything uh, you would like to add before I go on to the limitation quickly? Yes. Yeah, no, definitely. There's a lot to be actually uh, done together. We can build the community and uh, we can build an artificial community, both of auditors as well as audity, and see how to manage conflict, how to address various issues of getting information, get into like doing more detailed analysis before we conclude on any observation. So definitely there are very large use cases, including benchmarking and getting insights from an external as well as then leveraging it for the internal purposes. Yeah, we can go ahead to the limitation somewhere. Sure, sure. I'll quickly take another one, right? It's uh, from how did you use chat GPT for introducing yourself with data being extracted, right? So so I think I, I we quickly uh, put together right uh, a quick tool where we uh, uh, connected right LinkedIn API, right? Uh, extracted our data specifically, if you can put up a uh, names there. And then we have used uh, uh, text to speech, which is inbuilt in more of a whisper uh, library, which we used. And then uh, this is our outcome, which we have received, right? So two, three tools, quick tools, which we, we used, right? To, so that we can set up, right? The voice uh, enabled introduction of us. Yeah. So onto the limitations, right? Uh, here, uh, if you'll see, right? Um, Certain kinds of inputs simply aren't allowed uh, in the chat GPT. There's inbuilt ethical and compliance. I think Bharat mentioned, right? Uh, uh, I think he used it for one of the kids' exercise. Uh, so I think there is another uh, area, right, which we continuously talk about because there is no 
constraint onto uh, the age uh, of the of the user here in the chat gpt right so that is one of the area there are discussions that when we should introduce our kids right to to this and what is the ethical uh, more of our outcomes onto that so so again right if you write to chat gpt how to you know develop a bomb right it will not give an answer right so this is and how I see it is that maybe we'll have, we need more uh, constraint right into uh, the community right there. There are very specific constraint already there, but yeah, right, if you'll see here, I'm sorry, but I can't assist with the request, but I think there is, there's a limitation that we want more or maybe a layer so that we can define our own uh, more of a constraint and use it more effectively based on the community, based on the age of the users, so on and so forth, yeah. So that is one uh, training uh, uh, data set. Like I said, so 2021 was a cutoff date, uh, uh, September 20. It takes time, right? There's billions of attributes when you use to train a model. Uh, so it takes time, but there's a workaround that you can actually give access uh, to the internet, to the chat GPT through the plugin into the marketplace. So there are uh, there are limitations there as well, but uh, as of now, uh, if we can use it uh, as more of a workaround. Uh, onto the chat GPT. Uh, so I think one thing uh, which uh, Yukti mentioned is about it looks very uh, sometimes magical as well and sometimes very accurate as well because of what chat GPT uh, able to respond. But uh, chat GPT in, right, under the hood is not so logical, right? It is more of a uh, work on, works on a pattern and predict the responses. Even if you'll see right in some of the uh, cases, it is not able to calculate logically on certain problem statements. It gave us the inaccurate uh, answers, right? So, so let's not trust blindly onto the responses, though it looks very reasonable. But I think it's more of a that we uh, sit from authoring to more of a reviewer role. But we have to give a sharp scrutiny because it is not logical right behind the scene. It is more of a uh, more of a pattern builder, right? Predictor of, to, of the outcomes rather than logically thinking onto it. Yeah, so so I think uh, uh, that is uh, another one, uh, and uh, I think these are primary limitations. If you want to add something, I'll... yeah. So besides this uh, suburb, there are certain concerns on the IP intellectual property breaches. There are uh, concerns because you don't know from the source where you are picking up the data. So there could be breach of confidentiality. There could be breach of copyright and various types of uh, agreements which may be there, which we may not be complying unknowingly or knowingly because of using this thing and then reproducing these contents on various uh, places. So we have to be aware of it and we have to be extremely cautious about uh, this regulatory and legal aspects and build that layer in our entire organization and use this with a proper disclaimer. And whenever we are using this, we have to bring it to the notice that we may have leveraged this and it could be something which will uh, which may have impacted the copyright and IP aspect. So we, we have to be extremely, extremely cautious while using this as it is. Secondly, um, some of if you can go to the next slide, probably. Like secondly, we have to be extremely cautious about the privacy expect. In the sometime, we just forget that we are discussing with an open AI, which is open, and we may be sharing our personal information. We may be sharing our moods, our habits, our personal interest and also of our like uh, people around us or the organization which we are working or our clients and it could be a serious data breach and it could be a serious privacy issue which can be leveraged for various purposes so we have to be aware of this data privacy risk and as we know when we are using this in fact we are uh, providing training to this uh, entire model and we are helping them to improve on this entire like thing. So we have to be very, very cautious in using it and from that perspective, there is a risk of data leakage which Sambhav has already spoken of, uh, where if like for instance, audit observations which we are putting, right? It's a huge data leak. 
it's a huge huge in uh, private confidential information which we are sharing so one has to be very aware of about it and it could also result in reputation risk it could also result in loss of trust and therefore we have to be like that's the reason many co companies have actually clearly spelled out that they will not allow usage of this it's a process where first companies will have to do the risk assessment they will have to understand it in a proper manner properly test it put a proper risk control framework of using uh, these types of tools and technology and then based on the proper risk uh, based approach leverage it with a proper person responsible for monitoring the usage of it and dealing with the issues of regulatory compliance, data privacy training, and also the reputation risk part of it. So um, this is just to summarize the, the various constraints and various types of things which we must be aware of. And obviously, ethical uh, dilemma is always there because it may have some biases which may be built in it. So yeah, over to you, Samba. Yeah, just conscious of time, uh, but I think I'll leave you with uh, one of the thought here, which is a generative AI agents, right, which is happening in uh, as we are speaking, it's more of experimentation stage, that how about, right, if we have the instances of these generative AI agents or bots, and and of course, define them with a persona, right? So Google and Stanford has done a, a very interesting experiment. We are also doing a little bit there uh, onto this uh, uh, area where they have defined the uh, bots, right? John Lynn is a pharmacy shopkeeper at a Willow Market and Pharmacy who love to help people. He is always looking for ways to make process of getting medication easier, right? John Lynn is living with his wife, right? So this is a second bot, Main Lynn, who is a college professor. It is defining the persona for this bot as well. And son, Eddie Lynn. So they have bought together 25 bots, define the persona, right? Initial persona and leave them into the community, right? Uh, and then uh, it's more of an touch. They have seen, right? How this community progress uh, in duration of time, a few days, few weeks. And interestingly, right? If you'll see, possibly, I think you can uh, Google it right onto, this is a very detailed report but they are able to run the community. They are able to do the decision-making themselves. Uh, they are able to organize the party, right? If we'll, if we'll have maybe some bots themselves, and we give them a scenario that organize maybe a, a webinar, right? Five days webinars onto the session and arrange, uh, plan everything, right? Give us the project plan. Then potentially that'll be happening in the, in the future uh, and very near, near future I'm talking about that you, define the roles experience of your bots and put them a situation or problem statement to them and they can expect a more of a, a very detailed project plan uh, itinerary from these bots right so this is just one glimpse of uh, more of a future how uh, we are seeing some of the experiments which are happening around it but uh, but you can all contribute participate right just to keep you scratching onto onto this part so with that, I think I'll I'll stop uh, unless you, you want to add something. I, I think yeah, so thanks, Amber. Like it is really a great insight. And obviously we can also build a community for internal audit and also internal auditees like coming together and see how responses happen and it can enable good decision making, collective thinking, adding more value, the internal audit profession. So over to you, Sana, for uh, concluding the session. Yeah. Um, so before concluding the session, I would request everyone to please share your feedback. The feedback link is available in the chat box, which is, uh, which is shared with all of you. We request you to please share that, give us ideas how we can uh, take it forward, what all kind of webinars you are looking forward for us to plan in future. And it will definitely help us to give you more insightful session like this. Now, officially, uh, I would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you for your active participation in today's exhilarating webinar on Chat GPT for auditing, which is organized by the IAA Delhi Branch Women's Forum. Which, uh, and uh, thanks, Yukti for organizing this and also taking up this session. And thank you, Sambhav, for uh, making this session very interesting and useful for all. 
this session of course covers not just the auditing part of it how we can use it for auditing but in general as well uh, like how you can make a twitter post how you to use it over linkedin or all these things i hope that the insights and the knowledge shared by our esteemed speakers yukti and sambhav have left you feeling inspired and empowered to embrace the potential of the chat gpt in your auditing practice office jobs and of course on to the social media front as well the expertise and tactical insight have undoubtedly expanded our understanding of how this remarkable technology can revolutionize the field of auditing enabling us to achieve greater efficiency accuracy and effectiveness no doubt they have also highlighted about the risk which is associated with this technology i would like to express our gratitude to our president mr bharat garg for uh, being the support for all these webinars and uh, thank you yukti and sambhav for your exceptional presentation and for generously sharing your knowledge and expertise with us your passion of course uh, for the auditing and your dedication to leverage an innovative technology truly shown through inspiring us all to embrace new possibilities and approaches in our professional journey lastly a special thank goes to the whole audience who are with us to make the session really very very successful and no doubt that uh, uh, everyone was listening carefully and uh, uh, they were actively participating with enthusiasm and actively asking questions if you have any other question which is left over um i can see a lot of questions over there um and i require i think uh, most of them has already been covered during the session or uh, you can reach out to our speakers as well on the their email ids which they have showcased in case you have any other questions and once again thank you everyone for attending this webinar and the speakers and all of you to be here with us this is the end of the sixer super sixer series which we have organized uh, through the women's forum hope we will uh, organize similar kind of series in future as well with support from all of you to be part of uh, this session thank you everyone thank you thank okay. you everyone thank you. thanks bye. thanks everyone bye thank you bye bye